In module 7.4, we're going to be examining uh, stocks, particularly with the focus on static risk management. <clears throat> Typically, when you think about stocks, you don't really think about duration and convexity and first derivatives and second derivatives, but we're going to um, explore some different possibilities in that direction. We'll also take a look at um, some basic statistics and a few other things. And so we're going to explore static risk measures as they apply to various stock valuation models. We're going to review some technical details on return calculations. It's surprising to me how often uh, vendor data doesn't handle return calculations correctly. And we're going to identify some st sample statistics and related R code as it applies to stock data. The central finance concepts that we'll be exploring are the traditional dividend discount model and variations of it, some practical considerations for rates of return, again, some sample statistics, and applying static risk measures uh, within the context of the LSC model as it applies to stocks. And so the, if you recall the Gordon dividend discount model, um, that the uh, stocks will, uh, changes in investors required rate of return will have an effect. We'll explore the first and second derivatives res with respect to the assumed discount rate. Uh, we'll estimate modified stock duration, the Macaulay stock duration and st standard stock convexity, and apply similar analysis with respect to the growth rate. And so um, with the end stage dividend discount model, there's more variables that we can shock uh, in this particular model. The generality of the end stage dividend discount model affords the capacity to incorporate analyst viewpoint within the static risk measures. Uh, and then we'll apply static risk measures to the present value of expected uh, dividends function. With regard to rates of return, um, it's important that um, that whatever periodicity of returns that you're using, that these returns are in fact correctly calculated. Uh, the Global Investment Presentation Standards mandates, this is an old quote that you can find in the text material, um, that the assumption basically is any cash flow provided by the investment, in this case a stock, for example, a cash dividend, what we have to assume is that that cash dividend is reinvested in the particular uh, individual stock. Uh, and we'll re review some basic statistics and apply uh, static risk measures in the LSC model to these. Within the quantitative finance material, there'll be static risk measures in the dividend discount model. We're going to actually apply the LSC model to the present value of dividends function. And we'll provide a technical review of rates of return. Uh, holding period return stock statistics will be illustrated using rolling data. Rolling data is a very convenient way to understand uh, issues of stability with parameter estimates. And the static risk measures in the LSC model will be explored. So just by way of, uh, uh, if you recall the Gordon dividend discount model, we assume a constant growth rate of dividends. We assume a constant investors required rate of return. So the value of some stock is equal to uh, D0 times 1 plus G divided by K minus G. It, we can compute the modified duration as defined previously, and it's going to be simply 1 over K minus G. Macaulay's duration is just going to be uh, modified duration times 1 plus K, and convexity is simply 2 divided by K minus G squared. And so these calculations are very straightforward. And there's a certain power once you understand that if I have a liability stream that's deeply affected by interest rates, uh, it's important to know that there's a possibility to manage that rate risk or balance the rate risk of a stock portfolio with your present value of liabilities. And that's kind of the idea behind this, this line of thinking. We can also explore the influence of growth and, and calculate the modified duration of growth and Macaulay duration and convexity with similar straightforward uh, calculations in this simple model. 
exploring holding period returns and static risk measures. If you recall that the uh, return on a stock discreetly compounded is basically the value of the stock at the end of the period adjusted for dividends and other cash flows minus the stock at the beginning of the period. And so the numerator is the profit. The denominator is the stock at the beginning of the period. I can apply a Taylor series and <clears throat> come to the conclusion that the return discreetly compounded can be estimated with modified durations of investors required rate of return and modified duration of growth um, and um, apply the same uh, with convexity and I will be able to explain a significant portion of the rate of return of a given stock. With a dividend discount model, if we assume that the cost of equity capital is uh, based on capital asset pricing model, then we can uh, redo the calculations. The valuation model adjusted uh, for CAPM can be expressed uh, in this way. And again, the, the derivatives, the calculations of modified duration and convexity are, are, are straightforward again, and we can explore this. And you can begin to ask questions about what's, how sensitive is a particular stock to changes in the interest rate, changes in the uh, beta, uh, changes in... Uh, the growth rate, and we can explore uh, how to build portfolios with sensitivities that we prefer. With the end stage dividend discount model, if you recall, there's multiple stages. Each stage has a particular uh, in, uh, discount rate as well as a particular growth rate. Uh, and if you recall, there was the value of the stock. There's a stub period. There's a set of series, a finite series, and then there's a final infinite series. With that, we can compute uh, numerical derivatives of the underlying parameters and um, do analysis in that fashion. Uh, we can apply the LSC model to application to forward rates as well as growth rates. And so uh, if we assume the present value of dividends is a function of maturity time, uh, we can, we can uh, estimate the LSC model applied to the present value of dividends um, and uh, uh, come up with some results and understand the different sensitivities uh, that apply. Again, the GIP standard, uh, the inner, the how do we actually calculate rates of return? One way to do it is the you compute the interim rate of return. Anytime there's an event like a cash dividend, you compute an interim rate of return uh, and um, uh, uh, build up the uh, return calculations in that way. There's different averaging methods. You can compute the arithmetic average of returns, or you can compute the geometric average. Uh, in this particular case, if we have a stock that starts at 100, goes to 200, and then goes back down to 100, it has a 100% uh, percent return the first year, minus 50% the second year. Well, the arithmetic average says that I've earned 25% return. Well, that's clearly not right, because I started out with 100 and ended with 100. And so the geometric average is zero. So uh, as a general rule, geometric average is a much better approach if I'm trying to get an accurate estimate of investors holding period returns. Uh, time weighted rate of return illustration. Again, if we have dividends, we have to assume that the, uh, these dividends are uh, reinvested in the existing stock. If there's a two for one stock split, this has an effect on the market price. I'm not going to take the time to go through the technical details, but there's a linking method where we could compute the all-in holding period return, which in this case would be 3.82%. There's an index method where basically you just assume that you buy additional shares when you get the dividend. You keep track of things like two-for-one splits. And again, when you calculate the rates of return, you get exactly the same result. There's a variety of different indexes that are used in the stock market. Some are price weighted, like the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Others are value weighted, like the S&P 500. Uh, value weighted index uh, doesn't require, if you're trying to track a value weighted index, it doesn't require frequent rebalancing. Whereas a price weighted index, as prices move, uh, things get out of balance. Uh, the, um, there's a variety of different equally weighted approaches, either arithmetic or geometric. Um, and the index choice generally equally weighted makes sense when an account is small and you can uh, basically buy 
uh, any shares that you want. When the account is very large, then value-weighted makes more sense because for small cap stocks, you end up buying the whole company if you make an allocation there. And that's not really what you want to do. Uh, holding period return stock statistics. There's three different ways to estimate these returns. Discreetly compounded, continuously compounded, or dollar profits. And uh, these all give roughly the same results, uh, but they vary depending on context. A zoo is a particularly good package in R to handle this, uh, handle these calculations. There's a snippet of code here that's provided um, that gives you an idea how to calculate the continuously compounded returns, the discreetly compounded returns, and the actual change in price. Some sample statistics: the um, the sample average, geometric average, the the harmonic average is very useful in things like the P/E ratio where E could be zero. Well, if E is in the denominator and it's zero, you have a problem. And so the harmonic average is a good way to deal with things like PE ratios. Uh, you can compute rolling statistics, which are provided uh, in the R code, which is very useful in understanding that, um, that these uh, many sample statistics, when they're reported in documents, they look like they're just anchored in stone and it's a correct estimate. But once you look at rolling statistics, you realize these things move around a lot. And so just by way of an example, this is the dividend adjusted stock price for Wendy's, the hamburger company over a four and a half year period. This is the onset of the pandemic. And so what we notice is the rolling mean just bounces around, uh, but the continuously compounded mean, discreetly compounded mean, and uh, the dollar change. When the stock price is rising or moving a lot, uh, we do get some changes, differences with uh, discrete and continuously compounded returns and dollar changes, uh, but it's, it's primarily a price effect. Uh, standard deviation, this is probably the most important discriminating statistic uh, that I have found when analyzing individual stocks or comparing different portfolios. Um, the means tend to be very unstable. Uh, higher order uh, per, uh, statistics tend to be very unstable, but the standard deviation, um, although it's unstable, it's not as unstable. So this is an example of the rolling standard deviations for returns and dollar changes. And, and again, it's uh, fairly constant with the onset of of the pandemic, nobody could have predicted this huge spike in uh, the standard deviations with the onset of the pandemic. And if you'll notice, the dollar change actually uh, deviates significantly from continuously compounded and discrete compounded returns. And so um, the rolling standard deviation, although they track close together uh, during uh, periods of significant shock, we find that the differences are um, quite material. In the next part, we'll pick up here with uh, examining other statistics.